We are in a thermodynamics course with the code SEMM2413. We will start the course with Chapter 1, specifically the introduction and basic concepts of thermodynamics. The contents of the course will be based on a book, Thermodynamics and Engineering Approach, by Cheng El and Bowles. Before we start the course, let us browse through the contents of Chapter 1. Generally, there are 10 subtopics to be covered in the chapter as listed. This chapter will address the first course learning outcome or we usually call it as the CLO. After completing this chapter, students must be able to apply the basic concepts of thermodynamics. The knowledge will be delivered through lectures and active learning activities. Students' assessment will be focused on measuring cognitive skills level 3 based on Bloom's taxonomies through the first test. As you can see from these colorful figures, they show taxonomies and the suitable assessment methods to address each taxonomy. Based on the cognitive level of C3, you will be assessed on your skill to apply the more dynamics relevant concepts. Several methods can be used to measure the skill, such as multiple choice, short answer, essay, tutorials, simulations, games, or case studies. Now, let us find out what is thermodynamics. Thermodynamics can be defined as the science of energy. Although everybody has a feeling of what energy is, it is difficult to give a precise definition for it. Energy can be viewed as the ability to cause changes. One of the most fundamental laws of nature is the conservation of energy principle. It simply states that during an interaction, energy can change from one form to another but the total amount of energy remains constant. As we can see in figure 1.1, a rock falling off a cliff, for example, picks up speed as a result of its potential energy being converted to kinetic energy. That is, energy cannot be created or destroyed. The description of the energy balance can be viewed in a person, as shown in figure 1.2 where a person who has a more significant energy input or food than energy output, for example, through exercise, will gain weight, usually in the form of fat. A person who has a smaller energy input than output will lose weight. The change in the energy content of a body or any other system is equal to the difference between the energy input and the energy output, and the energy balance is expressed as in a given Form. The first law of thermodynamics is an expression of the conservation of energy principle. Recalling energy principle conservation, energy can change from one form to another but the total energy remains constant. Based on the example, the electrical energy is transformed into heat energy to boil the soup inside the pot. Part of the heat is transferred to the surroundings. Energy is a thermodynamics property. The second law of thermodynamics states that the energy has quality as well as quantity and natural processes occur in the direction of decreasing the quality of energy. For example, a cup of hot coffee left on a table eventually cools. But a cup of cool coffee in the same room never gets hot by itself. This can be shown as in figure 1.3. The high temperature energy of the coffee is degraded, transformed into a less useful form at a lower temperature once it is transferred to the surrounding air. There are two types of approaches to study thermodynamics. The first approach is the macroscopic. This macroscopic approach does not require a knowledge of the behavior of individual particles. Sometimes, it is called classical thermodynamics. It provides a direct and easy way to the solution of engineering problems. A more elaborate approach based on the average behavior of large groups of individual particles is called microscopic approach or statistical thermodynamics. Any systems 
that involve with interaction between energy and matter are considered to relate to thermodynamics areas. Thermodynamics is commonly encountered in many engineering systems and other aspects of life. The thermodynamics applications can be found inside an ordinary house, such as the heating system, air conditioning system, refrigerator, humidifier, pressure cooker, water heater, shower, iron, and even the computer TV. On a larger scale, thermodynamics plays a significant part in the design and analysis of automotive engines, rockets, jet engines, conventional or nuclear power plants, solar collectors, and vehicles designed from ordinary cars to airplanes. Now, let us move to subtopic 1.2. It is about importance of dimensions and units. Any physical quantity can be characterized by dimensions. Dimensions can be divided into two categories. The first category is called primary or fundamental dimensions. Some basic dimensions such as mass, length, time and temperature are selected as primary or fundamental dimensions. The secondary dimensions or derived dimensions are dimensions derived in terms of the primary dimensions. For example, velocity, energy and volume. As shown here, volume is derived from dimension of length to the power of 3. Units are defined as the magnitudes assigned to the dimensions. Two sets of units are still in everyday use today. The English system and the metric SI, also known as the international system. The difference between the two unit systems can be demonstrated in these two phenomena. Both systems have the same value of 1 respectively. However, in SI, the force unit is the Newton. It is defined as the force required to accelerate a mass of 1 kilogram at a rate of 1 meter per square second. In the English system, however, the force unit is the pound force and is defined as the force required to accelerate a mass of 32.174 pound mass at a rate of 1 foot per square second. The SI is a simple and logical system based on a decimal relationship between the various units and it is being used for scientific and engineering work in most of the industrialized nations, including England. The prefixes used to express the multiples of the various units are listed in Table 1, 2. The SI unit prefixes are used in all branches of engineering. Whereas, the English system has no apparent systematic numerical base and various units in the system are related to each other rather arbitrarily, which makes it confusing and difficult to learn. For example, 1 foot is equal to 12 inches. 1 mile is equal to 5,280 feet. And 1 gallon is equal to 4 quarts. As shown in Table 1.1, the seven fundamental dimensions and their units are presented. In SI, the units of mass, length and time are the kilogram, meter and second, respectively. The respective units in the English system are the pound mass, foot and second. The mass and length units in the two systems are related to each other by specific factors. Force is considered to be a secondary dimension whose unit is derived from the Newton's second law. In SI, the force unit is the Newton and it is defined as the force required to accelerate a mass of 1 kilogram at a rate of 1 meter per square second. In the English system, the force unit is the pound force. And it is defined as the force required to accelerate a mass of 32.174 pound mass or it is equal to 1 slug at the rate of 1 foot per square second. A force of 1 newton is roughly equivalent to the weight of an apple of 102 grams. Whereas, a force of 1 pound force is roughly equivalent 
to the weight of 4 medium apples, which is around 454 grams. Another force unit in common use in many European countries is the kilogram force, which is the weight of 1 kilogram mass at sea level. 1 kilogram force is equal to 9.807 Newton. The term weight is unlike mass. Weight is actually a force. It is the gravitational force applied to a body and its magnitude is determined from Newton's second law where M is the mass of the body and G is the local gravitational acceleration. We usually take G as 9.807 meter per square second or 32.174 foot per square second at sea level and 45 degree latitude. The mass of a body remains the same regardless of its location in the universe. Its weight, however, changes with a change in gravitational acceleration. The value of G or gravitational acceleration varies with location from 9.832 m per square second at the poles to 7.322 m per square second at 1000 km above sea level. However, at altitudes up to 30 km, the variation of gravitational acceleration from the sea level value of 9.807 m per square second is less than 1%. Therefore, for most practical purposes, the gravitational acceleration can be assumed to be constant at 9.807 m per square second, often rounded to 9.81 m per square second. Now, let us proceed to our real business to learn about energy. Work, which is a form of energy, can simply be defined as force times distance. Therefore, it has the unit Newton meter, which is called a joule. A more common unit for energy in SI is the kilojoule, where 1 kilojoule is equal to 10 to the power of 3 joule. In the English system, the energy unit is the British Thermal Unit or simply known as BTU which is defined as the energy required to raise the temperature of 1 pound mass of water at 68 degree Fahrenheit by 1 degree Fahrenheit. The magnitudes of the kilojoule and BTU are almost identical. Here is a good way to get a feel for the magnitudes of these units. If you light a typical match and let it burn itself out, it yields approximately 1 BTU or 1 kilojoule of energy. The unit for time rate of energy is joule per second, which is called a watt. In the case of work, the time rate of energy is called power. A commonly used unit of power is horsepower, which is equivalent to 747 watt. Electrical energy typically is expressed in the unit kilowatt hour, which is equivalent to 3600 kilojoule. An electric appliance with a rated power of 1 kilowatt consumes 1 kilowatt hour of electricity when running continuously. We all know that apples and oranges do not add. In engineering, all equations must be dimensionally homogeneous. That is, every term in an equation must have the same unit. If at some stage of an analysis, we find ourselves in a position to add two quantities that have different units, it is a clear indication that we have made an error at an early stage. Let us discuss example 1.1 to demonstrate dimensional homogeneity. Based on this example, the amount of electric power generated by the wind turbine and the money saved by the school per year to be determined. A wind turbine is installed to generate electricity. The wind turbine generates electric energy at a rate of 30 kW or 30 kJ per second. Then, the total amount of electric energy generated per year becomes 66,000 kWh. The money saved per year is the monetary value of this energy can be determined as shown. 
the annual electric energy production also could be determined in kilojoule by unit manipulations as follows. Based on this expression, the kilowatt, second and hour terms can be eliminated where 1 kilojoule per second is equal to 1 kilowatt. Therefore, the final answer becomes 2.38 times 10 to the power of 8 kilojoule, which is equivalent to 66,000 kilowatt hour, where 1 kilowatt hour is equal to 3600 kilojoule. Units can be used to our advantage. They can be used to check formulas. Sometimes they can even be used to derive formulas as explained in the following example. A sketch of the system is shown here. The volume of an oil tank is given. The mass of oil is to be determined. For simplification, let us assume that oil is a nearly incompressible substance and thus its density is constant. Let's say we forgot the formula that relates mass to density and volume. However, we know that mass has the unit of kilograms. That is, whatever calculations we do, we should end up with the unit of kilograms. By putting the given information into perspective, we have density and volume. It is obvious that we can eliminate cubic meter and end up with kilogram by multiplying these two quantities. Therefore, the formula we are looking for should be density times volume. Thus, mass is equal to 1700 kilogram. Now, let us move to another sub-subtopic, specifically on unity conversion ratios. All non-primary units or secondary units can be formed by combinations of primary units. Force units, for example, can be expressed as given by these expressions. Every unity conversion ratio, as well as its inverse, is exactly equal to 1. Shown here are a few commonly used unity conversion ratios. We have done with the first part of chapter 1. We will meet again to talk about other exciting topics related to thermodynamics. Stay tuned guys. Thank you for your attention.